I'm very happy to be here, and I should share with you uh, my enthusiasm for participating in this study. We've participated in many multi-center studies, uh, and I really want to say that this one was fun. And I'm very happy uh, that uh, our data uh, are supportive of that. So what I'd like to talk to you about are the results in the U.S. group of sites. And we'll talk also about BIRADS. And I want you to have a preview uh, of the second edition of BIRADS that we expect to be publishing later in uh, 2011. Uh, and we will be including a new feature elasticity, and I'll show you later on where that will go. But BIRADS has been the framework for all of this, for feature analysis and assessment of breast masses now for many years. But ultrasound itself has suffered from a lack of specificity, as I'll show you. Uh, the supersonic shear wave multicenter trial does improve, as David has shown you, for the entire group. Uh, the specificity, particularly when we look at moving BIRADS 4 lesions uh, to BIRADS 3. Uh, the background is, of course, our acceptance of breast ultrasound as an operator-dependent modality, uh, less so than I think really most believe, and also that I believe as well that other modalities are equally operator dependent, but that's another issue. Uh, uh, until about 20 years ago, uh, ultrasound was limited really in its indications to cyst versus solid differentiation and to the guidance of interventions. Uh, in 2003, with ACR, we published the uh, BIRAS, and it's a consistent method that really helped, I think, everyone uh, to analyze solid masses using a feature analytic approach. Uh, subsequently, the sensitivity and specificity of ultrasound, as we've used it more, uh, have improved. And user experience makes a huge difference, as well as the improvement in equipment that I've seen uh, over the last 15 years. So BIRAD stands for Breast Imaging Reporting and Data System. Uh, it is an acronym, and it is a registered trademark of the American College of Radiology. And what it includes is a validated group of morphologic features of masses that, in, in application, will provide diagnostic confidence in the three most important morphologic features taken together are shape, margin, and orientation. We looked at vascularity as a, another feature and found it supportive but not definitive. And for many years now, we have looked at tissue stiffness uh, assessment, but it has not been until relatively recently widely available for clinical applications, and we're very happy now that it is. The hypothesis is simple. Cancers are hard and benign masses are soft. And what our study uh, hoped to establish is how reliable is this hypothesis and how can it improve the specificity. So here's for you, and I hope the lighting is good enough for you to see. I have five cases up here. It looks a little dark to me from where I'm standing. But four of these are cancers and there's one that is not. So I don't know if you know yet which one is not. Uh, everyone picks something else, so don't feel bad if you don't get it uh, right. Well, I'll show you the answer. Uh, the one on the left, is that what you picked? Yes, okay. It's a duct with an inflamed wall. It's been sitting around for a long time, uh, irritating uh, that patient. And the other four are cancers. Uh, this one is a poorly differentiated invasive ductal cancer, grade 3. This is a grade 2 invasive ductal cancer. This is invasive lobular. And this one is a papillary carcinoma. So we have some problems and we need some help. 
the study that Dr. Cosgrove described to you uh, with the 939 participants overall, I'll focus on in the U.S. We had 371 participants in the United States from six sites. The mean age of these participants was 49 and a half years with mean median lesion size of 12 millimeters. These are the sites, Yale, Northwestern, uh, RIA, uh, Sally Job, which is when Dr. Stavros uh, was in Denver. Uh, he's moved west to the land of sunshine. Uh, Boston Medical Center, Thomas Jefferson, and USC. And if we apply the model, now this color scale shows I can't sing as well even as Dr. Cosgrove, and he didn't, he didn't demonstrate for you, so I won't either. Uh, but this is the color scale vertically shown, uh, where stiff is at the red-orange end, and black is the zero end, where shear waves don't penetrate. Uh, so blue and green, these are the, the benign-looking uh, elastographic colors uh, going upward. In this study, the kilopascal range that we use is shown here, but again, the FDA has not allowed us to use that, so in our analysis of these cases, I won't either. Uh, so the two features independently identified to be significant in diagnosis, as you saw on the, R, uh, the ROC curves, uh, are e-color. Green or blue is benign, simply, and e-homogeneity, and homogeneous is benign. So independently, those two features were important. The reclassification rules, I'll reiterate, you upgrade a BIRADS-3 if elasticity features are suspicious, so it would go to 4A prime, uh, that reclassified group, and a downgrade uh, to BIRADS-4 4A if the elasticity features are not suspicious, and you'd go down then to BIRADS 3 prime. Some examples, here are the E features. Uh, you've got homogeneity of the elastographic depiction uh, with a blue lesion that's very similar, and you can see through the elastographic depiction. This supports, and it's blue, the entire field is blue, support a downgrade to three. Uh, another case, here the homo heterogeneity or, uh, of the pattern, and you see uh, the stiff colors around the lesion, which is circumscribed if you look at it, uh, sorry, if you look at it uh, on the B-mode image, lead you to upgrade this. This was a biopsy, the core biopsy result was a fibroepithelial lesion. It did go to excision and it was a cellular fibroadenoma. The results for the U.S. cases are listed here and I'll just uh, pick out the relative ones, uh, the uh, relevant ones for you. Uh, we had 371 masses, of which 23% or 84 were malignant. And if we go down to the BIRADS 4 grouping, there were 36 malignancies categorized in BIRADS 4, not broken down. Uh, there were 186 lesions ca uh, classified as BIRADS 4. Once the application of the E features was made, that number of 186 was reduced by half, or nearly half, uh, to 96. And you see it here individually. Uh, there were 96 four primes, uh, 96 four primes, malignant with E color and malignant with homogeneity. And looking at four A's and four primes, I'll show it to you in a different way. Uh, in this chart on increase in specificity where we take BIRADS alone. And if we look at BIRADS alone, there were no malignancies that were grouped uh, in this morphologic analysis uh, of 94 lesions. The overall specificity, however, was 46.3%. 
looking down at the reclassification of these lesions, uh, we now have, instead of 94 uh, in BIRADS 3, we've taken quite a few of the BIRADS 4s and moved them into 3. So now we have 184, and we have a specificity that has increased by 30% for both E color green or blue and a homogeneous E map. Uh, and the key feature here is that the percentage of malignancy, which has risen by three, uh, is still below 2%. It's 1.6%. And we expect a less than 3% likelihood of malignancy for our probably benign lesions. Uh, another case, a 65-year-old woman with an indistinctly marginated mass that was uh, categorized with BIRADS as 4A, a soft inhomogeneous appearance on shear wave elastography, was biopsied. It was, would have been downgraded. Uh, and it, the result was fat necrosis, which is concordant uh, with both the BIRADS as well as the E features. A 28-year-old with a small mass, uh, palpable and lobulated, uh, was given a 4A on BIRADS. And the uh, color, uh, the E color and E homogeneity were both benign. This was a fibroadenoma. So that was a correct uh, result. This is an interesting case. Uh, the woman is 48. She had a carcinoma in another quadrant, spirides 4A. Uh, the E features, which might have supported an upgrade, uh, were counter to the B mode, really, assessment. So she was biopsied. The diagnosis was dense fibrosis, uh, and in this extensive disease ultrasound study, uh, we established her eligibility for lumpectomy, and there was no change in management. Another case where the E features are called for an upgrade, and this was an invasive ductal carcinoma, grade two. And here, another case where you can see the B mode image. It's hard to characterize. A soft image uh, with elastography with shear wave, and this would have been a mistake to have downgraded. Uh, it was an invasive ductal cancer, grade three, or a soft cancer, and there was a small percentage of those. So as we conclude, uh, I wanted to show you what BIRADS uh, in its expanded, reorganized form might look like. You see on the left uh, a listing of what's included in the 2003 version, the three major morphologic features that we take together, shape, orientation, and margins remain. We've included a section on general anatomy, uh, image quality, measurement and labeling, and the major difference is the new associated features group uh, where we've elast added elasticity assessment to a group of other features that we listed independently before, very important ones, surrounding tissue, architectural distortion, boundary zone, calcifications, and vascularity. And anticipating that you'll have many, many questions, uh, we have a large guidance section uh, that we've written with, we hope, reasonable answers to questions related to the BIRAD. So in conclusion, uh, there has been a significant increase in specificity when shear wave elastographic features are added to BIRADS 3 and 4A lesions uh, with a less than 2% rate of malignancy maintained for lesions in BIRADS 3. The benign B mode findings with no suspicious shear wave elastographic findings will determine thresholds for biopsy. And as I mentioned, elasticity assessment will be included in this important new BIRADS feature category of associated findings. And I thank you very much for your attention.